So in this video, I'm going to just do a quick review of the green amped method as we discussed in class so that you can review this while you're doing your homework. And so, you know, uh, if you take a look at the left diagram, and you'll remember what we were talking about in the infiltration unit, you see that water is moving downwards uh, from the surface, downwards uh, in depth in the, uh, in the unsaturated zone. And you can see that in reality, this is, a, this is a fairly complicated process. So in other words, you've got the different curves here, T1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, for the different parts in time. You can see at first, you know, the ground is not fully saturated, and then eventually through time, you know, if you were to just look at kind of a piece of this, like if you were to look at a cross section of this in depth, you would see sort of what's happening through time. So it takes some time for the ground to be saturated, but you know, in reality, it's kind of complicated. In the green out method, it is simplified in the sense that as soon as the infiltration is starting, the, you know, you've got a piece of it that is fully saturated, okay? And then you have a piece of it that has um, an initial moisture content. And you can imagine this whole thing is like a piston that's sort of moving downward, okay? And so we went through the derivation in class, and I won't sort of repeat it here, but basically one of the things to remember is that you can think about this as kind of a more complicated way of looking at a groundwater flow where the head uh, has, you know, the head is not just a function of the depth, but also the suction that comes from the fact that you've got these, uh, you've got these pores in the soil that are sort of trying to move the water through. And so you have to take that into account. And, but you can also just kind of say that the amount of water that you get infiltrating has to be a function of this L as well as the fact that you've got this porosity, okay? And so you can take a look in your book or in the lecture slides on sort of how this all works. But the purpose of this video is just to kind of remind you of sort of what the procedure is for actually pulling it off, okay? And so we went kind of through the major assumptions associated with this model that are worth reviewing. The first is that sharp idealized wetting front. And so, you know, below the front, you've got soil that has an initial moisture content. Above the front, you've got it, you assume that it's fully saturated, okay? Now, of course, remember that the moisture content is bounded by the fact that you've got the porosity, so the highest that the moisture content can be is the porosity. Okay, the second thing is that you've got this, um, front that has infiltrated to a depth L, and so that's kind of where that variable comes from. And then the last thing, and this is, this is important, is the idea that what we're gonna be talking about here has to do with what happens after ponding has occurred. And so you've got, not only do you have infiltration occurring, but you have that infinitesimally small depth of water that's sitting on the surface, sort of providing water to keep the infiltration process going. It's infinitesimally small because it doesn't actually contribute to the head calculations that we do in deriving this thing in the first place. Okay, and so when we go through the uh, equations, you've got two equations. So the top one, the one here, is associated with the cumulative infiltration, capital F, and then the bottom one is the infiltration rate, lowercase f. The bottom equation is easy to solve, but the top equation requires an iterative solution because you can see that that cumulative infiltration actually occurs in two places there. So the parameters associated with this are um, shown here on the screen as well as in your book. And one of the things to kind of consider is there's a little bit of a nuance associated with how this method assumes that you have the porosity, there's effective porosity and so forth. So you can think about these, all of these are assumed here to be properties of the soil itself. In other words, um, you know, like if you know when you're working on a site which, which one of these soils you have, you can just essentially assume values for these different things. Notice though that there's uncertainty in these parameters and the uncertainty has a really wide range. For our purposes, we can basically just use the kind of median or, or mean kind of estimates that are shown here uh, in the table. Okay, so we've got the equations. And again, just to remind you, that's what um, the two letters mean. And so the parameters come from that table. So you've got the wetting front suction, which has to do with that, the porosity of the soil. 
and the fact that you've got these um, pores that are that are sort of trying to pull the water up. The hydraulic conductivity um, in units of length per time, and then the change in soil moisture. And that change in soil moisture is a function of the effective porosity and the effective saturation. The effective saturation kind of touches on that idea of an antecedent moisture condition. So the more the, set, the soil is saturated initially, then the less that change between like the, the uh, initial moisture content and the saturated moisture content ends up being. So, you know, the cool thing is, is that you can basically just kind of plug these things in because they're just constants and they're not going to change throughout the course of what you're doing. Okay, so the first example that we did in class has to do with uh, just using this equation for one time step and sort of the mechanics of how this initial guess stuff kind of works. And so, you know, like you're given the fact that you have a silty clay soil, you have a time here, of initial effective saturation. And so this is just kind of solving the equation to see what the cumulative infiltration has been up until that point two hours. So we can use the lookup table to find uh, our parameters and then we compute the change in soil moisture, uh, which is shown with this equation. And again, you can see that the higher this number SE is, essentially the more um, the, uh, you know, that higher number is going to sort of reduce this coefficient, and then that's going to eventually reduce that delta theta. This uh, psi delta theta thing is basically just pre-calculated here because that term appears a couple of times in the equations. So when you're setting up your Excel sheet, you can just have that off to the side and then uh, re refer the other calculations to it. So you've got this, so we have the original sort of equation for cumulative infiltration. But what you can do is basically rearrange the equation slightly to facilitate it being used in an iterative uh, calculation. And this is something called fixed point iteration. And what it basically says is that on the right-hand side, you've got a guess. And then on the left-hand side, you, you, so you have a guess that is an input into the right-hand side, right? And then when you, can, when you calculate the numbers on the right-hand side, you can see if the result of that is the same as your guess. Because if you just take these numbers and sort of chug them through, if this F over here matches the, the F that you end up getting when you do that, then you're done. If not, you can basically use your previous, like the result of your previous calculation as the new guess the next time around, and, and it'll eventually converge. But you know, this example is kind of a silly example because we actually already gave you the right answer in that 0.43. And so at home, what you can do is verify by just plugging in that 0.43 there uh, that basically you end up getting the right answer, right? But you can imagine what would happen if say you had a guess of 0.5 or something like that, then basically it would require a few steps for you to get to the final answer. Once you have the value of capital F, you are now ready to just plug and chug to get lowercase f, right? Because you can see it's just a simple equation. And then the lowercase f says that the rate of infiltration is 1.2 centimeters per hour. So the way to think about this is that what this kind of ex exercise has shown us is that in this particular system, at t equals 0.2 hours, we have had 0.43 centimeters of, of infiltration so far. And that at that current time, the rate of infiltration is equal to 1.2 centimeters per hour. Okay. Keep in mind, of course, that what we talked about in class is the idea that the infiltration rate actually does decrease as a function of time. And so that number is going to be changing, sort of, it's not just constant in this calculation, that, you know, it's going to be changing. And that's why you kind of have to set up a whole spreadsheet to sort of do this over multiple periods of time. Okay, so if you haven't already set up your uh, Microsoft uh, solver in, uh, in Excel, um, you can kind of facilitate that by going into your options and sort of adding it in if it's not already there. There's great YouTube advice on this, and so you can copy the link here and take a look at some more stuff if you'd like. Okay, and so um, once you have that, then you can enable it in your, in your ribbons there. And the point of this is, is that it modifies the value of a cell 
uh, in order to minimize or maximize some output variable, an objective function that you have to, to plug in for yourself, okay? Uh, and so there's a number of different ways to do this, but I sort of set up here what your spreadsheet should end up looking like. You've got the time, and that time is a variable in your equations, of course. You've got a, a, a column in column B that where you can save your guess, right? And the solver is going to end up using that uh, within its little iteration here. Then you've got C where you type in that, that version of the equation that we just had on the previous slide. And then in D, you have to set up your objective function. There's a number of different ways to do this. Um, but if you just want to set the solver to minimize, I like to do an absolute value, uh, just a simple difference between the guess and the calculation. Um, you could also have just a regular old distance and, and, and have the solver set it to a value of zero if you wanted to. There are also fancier objective functions that you can try out. But in, within the solver parameters, you're basically saying that your objective function is in D, column D, you're trying to minimize it, and you're trying to do so by changing cell B. Now, see, the equation that you type into C is going to be a function of what's, what's in B, right? And so, like, doing this is going to end up making it so that by changing B, you're doing the calculation in C, checking it. The computer is essentially mimicking what you would do if you were just doing this by hand. Uh, and so, you know, it's not ever going to be sort of perfect. There's going to be some, uh, like a machine tolerance associated with it. Three, you know, three digits past the decimal is good for our purposes here. And in real life, you know, like these kinds of parameter estimation kind of techniques are used all the time. Uh, and sometimes these things aren't or are always kind of guaranteed to converge. Uh, we talk about this kind of stuff sometimes in some of the graduate classes and everything. Um, but, you know, I think that for the purposes of the Green Amp, in my experience, this has been pretty stable. Really, the thing to think about is that your guess has to be somewhat close to what the final answer is going to be. So if you notice that the thing is kind of screwing up, what you might want to do is just kind of change your guess to make it, you know, much larger and much smaller and that might help it kind of end up converging. Uh, so, so just kind of think about that if you have some trouble. Um, but if the guess is reasonably close to what the final answer is, then this algorithm is pretty bulletproof and, it, and you shouldn't have any problems with it. Uh, yeah, and so you can see once the solver is done, it's gonna give you some information and then basically you'll have the answer. And then column E, I didn't mention this previously, column E is just that lowercase f equation and you know, like basically, you can use column, you know, you can use column C, or technically column B, basically to um, you know reference column C essentially when you're setting up the equation in column E. Okay, and so you know the uh, other thing to kind of consider, and I mentioned this a few minutes ago, is just the idea that. This kind of plug and chug version of the of the green app method where it's just like the water is moving downward assumes that continuous ponding has already happened. And what that means is that you're the, you know, like you have to kind of look at these different conditions that could happen. You know, like in, in situations where the rainfall rate is less than the potential infiltration rate, at first all the water is going to infiltrate. Um, the infiltration in and, and that part is kind of tricky because if you think about it like the water is infiltrating, but you don't necessarily know like if it's saturated or whatever. I mean, it's, it's a little bit more complicated. What we usually are looking at here is situations where like the infiltration of the rate of the soil has already decreased such that ponding does occur, right? And once that ponding occurs, there's that water sitting on top. And so you always know then that there's enough water for it to be saturated and move downward. And so there's a little uh, example in your book that I'm referring to you to, to develop the time to ponding equation. And then if you're asked to do that, you know, that um, is gonna be something that you can do. So, you know, but, but really like, if you are told, or you're told to assume that continuous ponding has already occurred, then you don't need to worry about what's here. And you can just basically do the situation that we did um, kind of in the, in the example from today. Okay, and so you know, um, if you're if you if you miss class or you forgot about class, uh, what you can do is basically try. You can pause the video uh, 
and essentially set this up uh, for yourself and basically um, you know give give this this a try. I'm not going to sort of do an artificial pause in the video necessarily, uh, although maybe I'll pause for like a second or two. Um, and so really, this is just another example. Then uh, you've got a hydraulic conductivity. And I've already been nice enough to actually pre-calculate for you the delta theta and the psi delta theta so that you don't have to worry about that. Again, T equals 0.2 hours. And then you have to find the cumulative of infiltration. And I'm telling you what the initial guess should be. You're not obviously always going to have a preset initial guess. So, you know, this might be something that you have to kind of play around with a little bit. Again, make sure that that initial guess is in the ballpark of what you um, are doing. Now, if you had this on an FE exam, for example, you know, like it, one of the things that might be sort of a useful strategy is if you look at the answers that you're given in this clicker question, they're, they're you know, they kind of don't have a really super duper large range. You know, so you could try one of those answers essentially as your initial guess, uh, you know, and the initial guess here uh, corresponds to answer A. So um, just kind of a little test taking sort of uh, tip. Okay, so uh, pause the video and work it out. Are you back? Okay, let's uh, take a look at what the answer is then. And so the answer is C, and you can also sort of take a screenshot of this and sort of use this as an example um, if you're trying to play around with Excel. So you can see here, we've set up the, the, the Excel the same way. In columns G, H, and I of this example, I've already kind of set up what some of those constants are. Always a good idea to kind of type your constants in somewhere else and refer to them in a cell instead of typing those numbers in, uh, you know, like actually inside the equations that you have. To, that way you can set this, this, you can set this spreadsheet up once and then basically you'll have it forever. You know, like if you have new soils or whatever, you can just retype the numbers in column H and then you shouldn't have to do much over in columns A through E. The one thing that is different about this is you just have to make sure your guess is kind of set up properly. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's, that's a concern. But other than that, um, that's sort of how you do it. Okay, so hopefully this has been useful. Um, you know, moving forward, we're gonna have recorded lectures uh, as well. Um, but this was just a kind of a throwback for you um, to help you with your homework.